Hello and welcome to our daily devotion from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Adam Moline. Today we're going to continue our look at the life of King David, finding its fulfillment in the person and work of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're getting very close to the end of the life of King David, and yet some of the most important parts of his life uh, are going to be yet to come. Today we're going to pick up where we left off last time. We heard about how the Lord worked against the people of Israel to bring about a census. And this was them trusting in their own might and power and ability rather than in the might and power and ability of the Lord. And we're going to then pick up with that idea in 2 Samuel chapter 24, after the census had been had. Beginning in verse 10, but David's heart struck him after he had numbered the people. And David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. But now, O Lord, please take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. And when David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say to David, Thus says the Lord, three things I offer you. Choose one of them that I may do it to you. So Gad came to David and told him, and said to him, Shall three years of famine come to, your, to you in your land? Or will you flee three months before your foes while they pursue you? Or shall there be three days pestilence in your land? Now consider and decide what answer I shall return to him who sent me. Then David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Let us fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercy is great. But let not me fall into the Lord. Let, let not, whew, but let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence on Israel from the morning until the appointed time. And there died of the people from Dan to Beersheba 70,000 men. And when the angel stretched out his hand toward Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from the calamity and said to the angel who was working destruction among the people, It is enough. Now stay your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. Then David spoke to the Lord when he saw the angel who was striking the people and said, Behold, I have sinned, and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Please let your hand be against me and against my father's house. And Gad came that day to David and said to him, Go, raise an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. So David went up at Gad's word, as the Lord commanded. And when Aruna looked down, he saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. And Aruna went out and paid homage to the king with his face to the ground. And Aruna said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? David said, To buy the threshing floor from you, in order to build an altar to the Lord, that the plague may be averted from the people. Then Aruna said to David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what seems good to him. Here are the oxen for the burnt offering, and the threshing sledges, and the yokes of the oxen for the wood. All of this, O king, Aruna gives the king. And Aruna said to the king, May the lord your God accept it. But the king said to Aruna, No, but I will buy it from you for a price. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver. And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord responded to the plea for the land, and the plague was averted from Israel." There's a whole lot there that we could talk about, probably for a long, long time. I'm not going to focus on all the little details, but I'm going to point out just a few of them. That the Lord brought about a pestilence on the land of Israel, that 70,000 people were killed as a result of this pestilence. This is the just payment that is owed God for the sin of David. 
David's own words, which I had trouble reading there. He says, I am in great distress. Let us fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercy is great. But let me not fall into the hand of man. Implied that man is not merciful, like the Lord is merciful. David places his people, whom he had just counted as a sign of his own power and glory, before the Lord's mercy, so that the Lord might have mercy amongst the people by how the Lord saw fit. And so it is that the pestilence comes onto the land. The Lord, the angel of the Lord, the same one who was killing the people in Egypt during the uh, Passover, comes through the land now of Israel, but stops at the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. It's there that the pestilence comes to its end. Now, Tradition holds that the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite was the same location where many years before, 800 years before, in fact, that Abraham sacrificed Isaac, that they brought the wood and the fire and the knife, that they stacked it up there on that hilltop, that Isaac allowed himself to be bound and Abraham was just about to strike him when an alternative was found at the word of the Lord. It's there that God showed mercy on Isaac by not having his father kill him. And now this is the same place where the mercy of the Lord is shown again as the pestilence continues until the angel of the Lord gets to that point. And it's there then that David buys the threshing floor and offers a sacrifice thereon. Threshing floors would be a high hilltop, a place where you could go and throw your grain up into the air so that the shaft would blow away and the heavier grain would fall back down so that you could gather it to grind into flour to feed your family. This threshing floor, now bought by David, becomes a place where David makes a sacrifice. And David's son, Solomon, will use that same place to build a place of sacrifice, the temple in Jerusalem. It's there that sacrifices will continue from the time of Solomon all the way until the year 586, where the mercy of the Lord can be found, or as it was called in Abraham's day, Mount Moriah. And it's there then that the temple is rebuilt again during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah and lasts all the way until the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you see, he fulfills all that takes place in that location. The sacrifice of Isaac, the building of the temple, the ending of the pestilence of Israel as the angel of the Lord is stopped there on that threshing floor. Just a few hundred yards away, our Lord Jesus Christ himself becomes the sacrifice that fulfills all of those that had come before. He offers himself up as a sacrifice for all sin, for all people from all over the world. The threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite, it no longer has its purpose because sacrifices have been fulfilled in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Sacrifices have been completed in the death and resurrection of Jesus. All Old Testament sacrifices come to their end in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Of Jesus. And that sacrifice forgives all sins. It really is what forgives the sins of David that we've been reading about. It's what forgives the sins of Solomon. It's what forgave the sins of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's what forgives the sins of Ezra and Nehemiah. The death of Jesus is even what forgives your sins. It's because of Christ that you are forgiven 
and have received God's mercy. Mercy that brings eternal life, mercy that brings grace and peace, mercy that flows to you from God through his word and sacraments. All of these places are linked throughout all the pages of Scripture so that they ultimately might be fulfilled in what our Lord Jesus Christ did on that very same location. In the name of Jesus, amen.